His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboun, on his re election for a second presidential term. His Majesty congratulated the President and wished him success in the upcoming phase in achieving the aspirations of the Algerian people for continued progress and prosperity. His Majesty also expressed his hopes for further growth and development in the relations between the two nations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboun, on his re election for a second presidential term. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the victory of the World Endurance Champion, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, and Captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, after securing first place for the second consecutive time in the 160 km FAI World Endurance Championship in France. The cabinet also congratulated the World Endurance Champion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser, on his victory, affirming the importance of His Highness's efforts in consolidating the kingdom's global standing in endurance sports. The cabinet highlighted His Majesty the King's decree pardoning 457 individuals on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The decree underscored His Majesty's commitment to fostering national unity and social cohesion, enabling the pardoned individuals to reintegrate within society in line with human rights values and standards. Following His Royal Highness's directives, the Cabinet directed the Ministry of Labor to provide training programs and job opportunities to the pardoned individuals, empowering them to contribute to the Kingdom's comprehensive development and fulfill their social responsibilities. The Cabinet stressed the importance of His Majesty's address upon receiving distinguished Bahraini citizens, which highlighted the Kingdom's various national achievements aimed at advancing the country. The Cabinet highlighted His Majesty's address, which recognized individuals excelling in Quran memorization and recitation who have achieved leading positions in global competitions. The Cabinet congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness on Prophet Muhammad's date of birth, peace be upon him, wishing Bahrain and Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. On the occasion of the International Day of Democracy, the Cabinet affirmed the Kingdom's ongoing democratic process supported by His Majesty the King as part of the Kingdom's comprehensive development. In this regard, the Cabinet reviewed preparations by the Representatives' Council for the by-elections in the first constituency of Amhara Governorate and directed the necessary measures to ensure its smooth implementation. The Cabinet also congratulated Bahrain's national basketball team on their victory in the 17th Gulf Championship in Bahrain. The Cabinet noted the team's advanced performance, which adds to the Kingdom's records of sports achievements by Team Bahrain. The Cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Civil Service Council Civil Service Bureau regarding the restructuring of a government agency. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law amending the decree law that regulates fishing, exploitation and protection of marine resources. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between the Directorate of Agriculture and Animal Wealth at the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and the Arab Gulf University to cooperate in scientific research and training in the agricultural field. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Works and Gulf University. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Tender Board and the Salam Bank on initiatives that support financing and guarantees for small and medium enterprises. A memorandum submitted by the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture regarding the completion of the Karzakhan Beach and Walkway Construction Project. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Education on updating the Educational Infrastructure Development Plan for 2020 to 2030. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and eight laws submitted by the Representatives' Council and four laws submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior on the population census of Bahrain. It outlined that the Kingdom's population at the end of 2023 was approximately 1,583,934 people, increasing in mid-2024 to approximately 1,588,670 people. The Cabinet then took note of the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 36th meeting of the Agricultural Cooperation Food Security Committee of GCC countries. The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the work of the 10th meeting of the GCC Ministers of Social Affairs and Development. Details on the start of the 2024-2025 academic year. 
The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 15th edition of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the Use of ICT in Education for 2023. The outcomes of this year's Youth City 2030, which was held during the period from 21st of July to the 29th of August. And foreign visits by Bahraini ministers and the visits of foreign delegations to the Kingdom of Bahrain in September 2024. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Captain of the Royal Endurance Team and World Endurance Champion His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday was officially crowned the gold medal during a ceremony where he was crowned champion of the 160-kilometer FAI World Endurance Championship in France. Present were the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy President of the Supreme Council for the Environment and Vice Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee and member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nasser's sons, and His Highness Sheikh Khalid's sons. His Highness and the Royal Team's delegation were delighted with the honoring ceremony amid a large crowd that stood to greet His Highness for winning the World Endurance title. His Highness's horse, Everest Lamiguire, was awarded the Best Condition Award, adding to the World Championship title of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. His Highness retained the World Championship title for the second consecutive year after winning the title last year at the Budi village in the UAE. His Highness finished the race in 8 hours and 32 minutes, beating UAE rider Saeed Ahmed Al Harbi, who finished second. The third place went to Francis Melody Talisat, while Royal Team rider Jafar Mirza finished 14th. اللهم لك الحمد اليوم هو يوم اللي أقدر أستوعب فيه اللي صار أمس في بطولة العالم والحقيقة فرحان جدا بهذه النتيجة فرحان جدا بفرحة سيدي جلالة الملك الله طول عمره مملكة البحرين واتصال سيدي سمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد عقب خط النهاية وإبراز تشجيع لي شخصيا كان يعني اللي اللي اختصر كل هاليوم هذا لي فإنجاز والله الحمد ما يوقفنا عند حدنا دائما ما راح نطلب إن شاء الله التطور ودائما ما إن شاء الله راح نسعى للمنافسة والله يوفق كل مجتهد أسرارك طال عمرك وعزمك وتجهيزك هذه البطولة والحمية اللي سويتها يعني شيء مش طبيعي طال عمرك صحيح الله طال عمرك يعني هو الانضباط والتضحية في نفس الوقت هي السر للوصول إلى هذه المتابعية الحمد لله الداركو والأفرس طال عمرك الحين الاثنين أكيد عندهم نفس الغلع طبعا طبعا داركو غالي وأفرست غالي كلهم عطوني ميدالية ذهبية يعني وما ندري إن شاء الله من هو بعد القادم اللي يعطيني ميدالية ثالثة إن شاء الله طال عمرك شكرا جزيلا الله يطول عمرك مشكور الله the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa issued Edict 44 of 2024 naming the Minister in charge of supervising and overseeing the Council for the Development of International Commercial Dispute Resolution Mechanisms in the Kingdom of Bahrain following the Cabinet's approval. The Minister of Legal Affairs shall be the Minister responsible for supervising and overseeing the Council for the Development of International Commercial Dispute Resolution Mechanisms in Bahrain. The Deputy Prime Minister also issued Edict 45 of 2024 appointing the Secretary General of the Council for the Development of International Commercial Dispute Resolution Mechanisms in Bahrain based on the proposal of the Minister of Legal Affairs. Marika Paulson shall be appointed Secretary General of the Council for the Development of the International Commercial Dispute Resolution Mechanisms in Bahrain. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in the presence of the Chief of Public Security and the Director of Operations received a number of officers and members of the rescue police following the success of the patrols in coordination with the main operations room in rescuing two people, a car driver and a passenger. The rescue vehicle was able to stop their car after the cruise control device failed and the car was traveling at a high speed of 180 km per hour. 
The minister praised the high readiness and efficiency of the patrols and operation rooms and the elements of securing the street, as well as the speed of movement and performance that was characterized by courage and professionalism. He praised the continuous presence of security patrols and the use of modern technologies that enhance security and public safety. The main operations room received a report that the car driven by the citizen on Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Highway towards Manama had a broken cruise control and was accelerating until it reached a high speed. The driver immediately was contacted and provided with instructions and safety measures, and one of the rescue patrols was able to handle the situation and intercept the car from the front until the car was completely stopped before it reached the traffic lights without any accidents. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the GCC Russia Joint Ministerial Meeting for Strategic Dialogue, which was held at the headquarters of the GCC Secretary General in Riyadh. During the meeting, the strong historical relations between GCC countries and Russia were discussed within the framework of the strategic dialogue between the two sides and ways to enhance and develop them at all levels in a way that achieves mutual benefits and common goals and work to implement the joint action plan for the period of 2023 to 2028. The two sides also discussed opportunities for developing cooperation and joint coordination in various political, economic and development fields in a way that enhances the mutual interests of both sides. Views were also exchanged on regional and international issues and current developments including threats to regional security and stability and the war on Gaza. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Rashid Zayani, participated in the GCC India Joint Ministerial Meeting for Strategic Dialogue held at the GCC General Secretariat headquarters in Riyadh. The two sides discussed the course of the close historical relations within the framework of the strategic dialogue between the two sides, as well as ways to enhance joint cooperation in various political and economic fields, investment, promotion, and cultural exchange. The joint action plan for the strategic dialogue between India and the GCC for the period 2024 to 2028, which includes political, economic, commercial, cultural, social and other vital areas of cooperation, was also approved. The two sides also discussed the latest developments and regional and international topics of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the GCC Brazil Joint Ministerial Meeting for Strategic Dialogue in Riyadh. They discussed the course of their strong historical friendship ties between the two sides and ways to develop them in various fields, and reviewed aspects of developing joint work at all levels for the benefit of both sides. The two sides also discussed the most prominent regional and international developments and ways to confront the challenges facing the region and the world. During the meeting, a memorandum of understanding was signed for consultations on issues of mutual interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of External Affairs of India, Dr. Subramaniam Jashankar. The two sides highlighted the long standing Bahrain India relations and efforts to enhance cooperation in various sectors. They also discussed means to enhance coordination in international forums and exchanged views on several regional and international matters. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, Mauro Vieira. The two sides discussed the Bahrain-Brazil relations and means to enhance cooperation in addition to discussing topics of mutual concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the 161st meeting of the GCC Ministerial Council, which was held at the headquarters of the General Secretariat in Riyadh. During the meeting, the topics on the agenda were discussed, including following up on the implementation of the resolutions of the GCC Supreme Council and the Ministerial Council, the recommendations submitted by the Ministerial Committees and Specialized Councils on Joint Gulf Action, and the reports prepared by the General Secretariat on issues related to Gulf cooperation. The Ministerial Council also discussed the progress of negotiations of tra free trade agreements between the GCC and a number of countries and international groups, the joint ministerial meetings between the GCC and a number of friendly countries, and aspects of strengthening joint Gulf action in various fields. It discussed political and security developments in the region, the war in Gaza, and efforts to stop the war releasing hostages and detainees, facilitating the delivery of humanitarian aid to the civilian population, as well as issues related to maintaining regional security and stability. 
His Majesty the King sent a written letter to His Majesty the Sultan of Amman on further strengthening relations between the two brotherly countries. The Minister of the Diwan of the Amani Royal Court, Khalid bin Hilal al Busaidi, received at the office the Ambassador of Bahrain to Amman, Dr. Jama bin Ahmed al Kabi, to hand over the written letter. During the meeting, the Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and his wishes to His Majesty the Sultan of Amman of good health and to the Amani people further progress and prosperity. For his part, the Minister of the Diwan of the Amani Royal Court requested the Ambassador to convey His Majesty the Sultan's greetings to His Majesty the King and his wishes to the people of Bahrain of further progress and prosperity. The World Bank's Global Container Port Performance Index 2023 ranked Khalifa bin Salman Port as the most efficient port in the world for small ports. More in this report. Bahrain is enhancing the position of Khalifa bin Salman port on the global port map due to its strategic and logistical importance as a link between the east and west through its land, air and sea ports, as ranked as the most efficient port for small ports by the World Bank in 2023. The port in Bahrain has been ranked as the most improved in the GCC and the 10th best in West, Central and South Asia, a move that is expected to boost its position as a thriving regional logistics center and is part of the government's economic recovery plan. The logistics sector strategy within Bahrain's economic recovery plan has significantly improved the country's logistical position. The port, strategically located near Bahrain International Investment Park, is a hub for manufacturing and industrial services with 114 local multinational companies and service companies. It has been a key driver in Bahrain's economy with 80% of international companies investing in it. The port's importance in the region is evident, making Bahrain a crucial logistics center and a starting point for industries and exports, thereby strengthening its position on the international trade map. The Kingdom of Bahrain announced ambitious plans to increase its visitors and boost its tourism sector as part of its economic diversification program, which includes its segment with Saudi Arabia to promote the two countries globally as a single tourist destination, along with expanding its tourism options. More in this report. Every year, millions of tourists from across the GCC and beyond enjoy the best experience in the Kingdom of Bahrain through a comfortable and international lifestyle that attracts different tastes, following tourism economic plans focused on events, festivals, beaches, food services, retail and entertainment that keep pace with developments in the region. History, rich culture and major events have created a thriving tourism and hospitality sector, providing investors with world-class infrastructure and a wide range of retail, entertainment, dining, hospitality and digital infrastructure opportunities. Visitor numbers in 2023 were a testament to this, rising by 25% year-on-year, while revenues increased by almost a third. Under the Kingdom of Bahrain's five-year economic recovery plan launched in 2021, Bahrain aims to increase the total number of its tourists to 14 million by 2026. The Kingdom of Bahrain always stands out on the international map as a must-visit destination that embraces a harmonious blend of heritage and modernity that takes visitors on a profound experience in a world of cultural enrichment, sporting excitement and entertainment in an unforgettable journey. Bahrain International Airport's operational capacity in August recorded a remarkable growth according to a report published by the Aviation Week. The airport's operational capacity has grown, supported by advanced IT infrastructure. These figures demonstrate that airlines are steadily keeping up with Bahrain International Airport's improvements, resulting in increased flights and a broader range of destinations. Arab Parliament Speaker and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights, Adel Assoumi, participated in the 10th Conference of Human Rights Officials of Arab Interior Ministers, which was held at the Police Academy in Egypt. Al Assoumi praised the support of His Majesty the King to the human rights file in Bahrain, which is reflected in many pioneering initiatives, the most recent of which was the pardon of 457 inmates on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne.